Hi. So today I want to talk about a couple of aspects of the CV inputs on the Euro Bureau, or Zebu as I call it. Uh, <clears throat> some of you may have already encountered some issues and heard about them, but the two aspects I want to talk about are the clock filters and the transposition setting. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to access these things. You select one of the CVN modules and then you press Shift plus Edit. And as you scroll down, you see the output range, the input range. Output range is how it's outputted into the Zoya environment, and input range is the voltage that is expected at that input. Then you have clock filter and transpose zero volts. So Rather than explain them, I'm going to show them off and hopefully explain them in the process. The first place to start is with the clock filter. Now I've created a little kick drum, just quickly to go over that patch. I've got a sine wave oscillator going into a bandpass filter, it's slightly resonant, and it goes into a VCA. Then I've got an attack, decay, really just a decay envelope that goes into a multiplier to give it more of an exponential drop-off, which I think works really well for percussion. Uh, and then that goes into the VCA and also a little bit into the filter, and you get this sound. It's nice, but what if I want to use my clock to drive that rather than my finger? Well, if I plug in my clock, Actually, first, if I make a connection from this CV input to the ADSR, I, I start getting noise already. And if we look at the output of the ADSR, what's happening here is that the noise from the line is <coughs> causing this to re-trigger again and again and again and again. We can look at the VCA or the oscilloscope output. So that's not great. If we connect our clock source, it gets even worse because now we've got just sort of constant re-triggering. So what we can do here is set a clock filter. Remember we're going into the edit menu. And when we set a clock filter, essentially what we're doing is creating a threshold that the signal that's creating the clock needs to exceed so that the input can differentiate it from the noise. And there are a couple of different thresholds, and not all of them will work for your input. So just try them until they do work. And then you've got your clock going. Now we're getting the steady, awesome beat that I wanted. So that's the clock filter. I'm going to disconnect this for a second. The other input option that interests me is the transpose zero volts. And you've got two options here, A and C. I'm going to leave it on A. The default is A. <coughs> the Zoya was built on the MIDI octave, and the MIDI octave is an A to A octave, but Eurorack uses a C to C octave. So in order to make sure that sequences coming into and going out of, I'll say that this option also exists on the CV outs, are transposed correctly, there's an option to add an offset. So I've got hook up my other fancy cable. I've got a sequence coming from my ornament and crime. Very basic sequence. I'm going to use the same VCA. Just disconnect the filter, put the oscillator in. This is just a square wave oscillator. I'm going to reconnect my trigger. Now the sequence is playing, but it's not playing the correct notes. 
is the sequence that I designed is built around a C scale. And we're getting A's here, if you notice. So what I can do is go into the options again and transpose. And what that does again is apply an offset to this input so that it plays in C rather than A. And that's really all that that is. Now, if I had built this sequence, I'm going to disconnect this for a second. If I had built this sequence inside of Zoya and wanted to send it to an oscillator outside of Zoya, then the CV output has a similar option where we can transpose from A, which is how Zoya uses pitch internally, to C. And again, it'll apply an offset so that your sequences are tuned correctly. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, these are pretty important things to understand at the very, you know, early stage of integrating Zoya into your rack and into your normal work habit. So I hope this was helpful. I plan on doing some more stuff, but this one seemed like it was pressing. So. Uh, if you want to know more about the clock filter, I've included a description that Jay Fee, Jason Fee, one of the designers of Zebu, wrote to me in an email. I pasted that into the description. Uh, it's also on my tips and tricks page, as well as a wordy explanation of this transposition option. So thank you for checking this out. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day. Enjoy Zebu.